What's up guys? Got another couple trees to take down. Gonna take them down today with a couple of main axes. This one was made two years ago down in South Portland, made by Brant Cochran. It's about a two and a half pound uh, main wedge, Allagash Cruiser. Lovely little axe. This one's a Snow and Neely made maybe 50, 70 years ago, somewhere in that range. This is a three pound uh, kind of a wedge, New England pattern. This one's got like a, probably a 20 degree bevel on it. This one's actually sharper than it should be factory. This one's like at a 17, so it's almost like a razor blade. It's a little too, too much of a angle. We're looking for a little bit more than that to protect the blade. Hopefully they hold up in this hemlock. So we got two hemlocks here that are dead standing. They're pretty dry. They're gonna chop really hard. And I'm gonna drop it exactly the way it's leaning right over that way we'll be able to get the machine to it to buck it up. So let's go to work. All right, the first thing I want to do is put a notch in this tree to give it room when it falls that it could collapse on itself and go the right angle. So I'm going to come in flat on the bottom, fairly flat on the bottom, and then a steep angle at the top so it has a mouth to be able to close as it starts to fall. And then what I'm going to do is come around the back and finish off the back about two to three inches higher than that notch so that way it falls and makes a little bit of a hinge as it's fallen and controls the way this tree's going to fall. Wind's got to push in this way pretty hard. I want to keep it kind of on the straight line that it's leaning towards right now. So it shouldn't be too hard today to get this thing to fall somewhere in that direction right there. So it all starts with the first knock. It's important to try to keep the axe flat coming in. The way you want to swing, it's going to be at an angle like this, which is going to make this notch the wrong angle. So. I always have to kind of fight myself to make sure I'm going fairly flat in or at least clean up the notch after I'm done with that. And then, then the steepness of the notch too. And you can, you can clear off the bark a little bit if you want ahead of time. But it's all going to go. It's got a nice little knot right there. So yeah, let's uh, get some mud here. Some wood chips to stand on. Let's go ahead into this one with the snow and Neely. Yeah, so this tree is about three, two and a half to three of my blades across. So what I'm trying to do is go one, two across to get my flat and then take those chunks out by hitting down at my angle. These ones are more or less slicing. These ones are more or less cutting. Yeah, so there you have it. There's your, your entry and your, your opening cut. Pretty well done. Show you that. So you want to go about halfway to a little bit more than halfway across. This tree has got such a lean on it that we're not going to go more than halfway. That's it. 
and it shouldn't take too many chops on the back. Right about here, a little bit higher than that notch on the front. Probably a couple chops will do it. I'm gonna clean up this side of the notch so it has room to fall and kind of twist this way. It's pretty ugly. But yeah, we'll, a uh, couple pretty good hits. Take a little bit of meat off the back and that baby's going down right into that wood pile. Here we go, right about there. And you're still trying to take that notch off the back, similar to the front. So a couple hits and I think we got a feeling she's gonna start to go. That's a really wide hinge. one bites the dust got a nice clean hinge straight across that's what you're looking for about inch and a half maybe two inch hinge wasn't really my cleanest cuts but it got the tree down and got it right where I wanted pretty safely so you can see where it actually pulled and the fibers that's your hinge so that's where the tree is actually bending as it's falling before it breaks away and that keeps it controlled to where it wants to fall you know, you control that with your hinge. So my axe cuts were pretty much as far as this, this, this across with the open mouth here. And in the back, you can see where my axe cut all the way into here and one downward cut to make this hinge perfectly level all the way across. And when you do that, the tree for the most part is gonna go right where the hinge allows it to go. So there you go. There's that three pound Snow and Neely. It's a really good old ax right there. Super, super sharp. Really, really steep, um, really, really low angle on that thing. Might be like 17 degrees on that thing. I'll, I'll measure it later and put it on the video. Might even be less than 17. It's, it's almost like a knife how sharp that is, which you gotta be careful when you're gonna limb or with any knots. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this tree up a little bit with it right now. That's sharp.
All right, this next one's gonna be a bit of a challenge, the one with the ax on it right there. I'd like to get it to, to land about where I am, but we got a lot of problem with the branches off of this other big hemlock that's leaning this way. For one, it's gonna, it's actually pointing in towards the woods over there. I'm gonna try to get it to fall on this side, the left side of that stump I just created. If I can do that, I could probably bounce it off of the limbs here on this nice pine or hemlock, I guess. You know, on that nice hemlock and on these other hemlocks. But if it goes in that direction, then it could get hung up and have a problem. It's really, really got a hard lean on it, the wrong direction, and the wind is actually pushing it that way too. So, got my work cut out for me. This, this one's gonna be a challenge for sure. What I'm gonna try to do is, is notch it and maybe get a good push on it before it falls which is quite a challenge but as you can see it wants to go directly away from me and I want it to go somewhere that direction right there yeah it wants to go to the left pretty hard really hard <laughs> oh man that's gonna be a challenge what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the hinge pretty strong on the right side so it kind of twists towards it and try to get a push on it. I'm still going to take the bird's mouth out right here pointing this direction but I'm going to leave the hinge on this side so hopefully it's got a little twist as it breaks free and I'll take most of it around the back side. I'm going to use a little bit smaller axe on this one. Got the Branton Cochran on this one. A couple pounder. Try to get a notch going across, leave the hinge on this side and take it on this side, and then try to get a little shove on it over here. It's going to be really hard, especially whereas I'm pretty high up on my, maybe I'll try to cut it a little bit lower too, which isn't as comfortable, but it'll give me a little bit better push from up here when I'm trying to push it down. This sucker's right in the way, I should probably take this guy out first. That'll give me a little bit more room to work when I'm trying to push it that way. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> so a little bit smaller axe, a little bit lighter axe, a little smaller cutting surface, but super sharp and should be pretty accurate with it. Alright, let's see what we're doing here. So I definitely got to take this front down quite a bit on this side. There we go. 
I got her opened up. As you can see, she leans hard the opposite direction. It's gonna be a challenge. All right, I'm gonna try to open it up on this side. Bring it around and try to give it a bit of a push. I don't know if I can though, to be honest with you. She's a beast. If she goes that way, she goes that way. That was a lot harder than it looked. Wow. Sweet. A little bit of pushing helped. But I'll show you why that tree came around and turned like that. A little push on it, but you could see my hinge is a little bit wider over here on this side than it is here. And I kind of focused on getting through on this side towards the end. This side I wanted to cut it, get to my hinge, leave it, and then come around and come all the way through here, which I started to do, and then she started to let go. So that was perfect. So my hinge goes from nothing right there to maybe a half inch, full inch, inch and a half out here. And that enabled that tree to, as it let go, it let loose on that side completely. This side held, so it actually twisted as it fell which enabled it to fall over here where I wanted it to fall instead of to the left of the stump where the way it wanted to fall was that direction over there. So that's how you can try to make a tree go your way without wedges and just by controlling your cuts. Now, wind's a factor and the weight of the branches is a factor too. That one, luckily, this tree's dead, so it didn't have a ton of weight, just the weight of the branches and they were pointing the wrong way, but I was able to give that tree a twist and when it twisted, it actually fell and rolled the right way, landed right on the other log. There you have it. Oh, maybe that beast is next. That one's still got another year of life and it is not looking great, but there's a bug getting after these hemlocks. All right, let's buck it up into pieces so we can manage it.
was a knot in there. That's what was holding it. Right, there you have it she's all bucked up and ready to go got those two trees down two hemlocks now hemlocks pretty hard wood and especially when it's dead and dead standing when it dries out it gets super super hard both axes performed wonderfully the Brant Cochran's a little bit lighter and it actually I'd say it did a little bit better today when when it's lighter like that and you don't have a lot of experience it's a lot easier to be accurate and one accurate swing is better than four or five hard swings that miss your mark. So being accurate is definitely a key. The Snow and Neely we had a little bit of trouble with. Okay, it's a wonderful ax, it's a good weight, good full size bit. But whoever had this one before me definitely sharpened it too sharp. They took the, the cheeks down a little too much and it's got like a 17 or less degree bevel on it. Maybe even a 15 which is way too sharp for cutting woods that might have knots or, or even splitting or anything like that. You don't need an axe with that much of a bevel. You actually want to go a little bit stronger so it backs up the steel. And I'll show you why on this axe right here. I'll show you what happened to it just today. As you could see on the, on the edge, you could see it kind of peened over. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus. It actually peened a little bit and dulled right through there. And that's because it's too sharp. It either hit a knot or it hit a hard part of the wood. It's just too thin back in the cheeks here. So you don't want an axe with that much. I'll show you on the on the um, Brent Cochran. We're looking at more like a 22, maybe a 22 and a half degree bevel. And then right at the very tip, it sharpens down and in, giving it some serious sharpness right there. But a nice strong bit. That thing's just as sharp. I could shave with that or or just do that and it'll stick in. But the Snow and Neely, on the other hand, was a little bit too sharp, a little bit too thin, and you could kind of see the, the leading edge rolled a little bit in a couple spots where it's too thin. Now that thing's a razor blade and it's sharp, but it doesn't do you much good when you're cutting down trees when it's that sharp and, and that thin. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this edge and I'm gonna file it down flat across and then I'm going to come back in and file sharper edges back into it, but with a little bit more of a bevel. So it's going to shorten up this bit by about maybe a quarter inch. I'm going to come back about a quarter and make that thing a little bit steeper, giving it a lot more strength. So you could split wood, you could, you could limb with it, you could hit knots, and it's not going to roll the edge like it just did there.